wonderful. We can move to uh, Lieutenant Bundy's presentation. Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair, and members of the commission, uh, thanks for having us here for this presentation. I'd like to introduce our Major Crimes Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Tim Bundy. Welcome, Lieutenant. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, I'm here to present on the mobile observation tower that the PD is, is planning on purchasing here. And if we can go, go to the next slide, thank you. So the Pasadena PD is tasked with preventing and investigating crime here in Pasadena. The mobile observation tower is gonna help us with both of these items and it has distinct advantages that will help us accomplish both of these goals. One of which is an elevated viewpoint of up to 30 feet. Another one is that has four high definition cameras that each have up to 40 zoom power capabilities. And it also has a National Institute of Justice level four ballistic protection, which I'll talk about more later. So we have two main plans for the mobile observation tower. The first one is, is use at the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl has numerous events annually, up to 25 of which are categorized as displacement events. These displacement events have increased and they're the ones that attract tens of thousands of people and they require a significant police presence. UCLA football games are some of these displacement events and we're expecting higher attendance at these games based on UCLA joining the Big Ten Conference. The Rose Bowl is also hosting at the next Olympics, both men and women's soccer semifinals and finals, which will attract big crowds. The elevated position of the mobile observation tower is a big benefit. At the Rose Bowl, it has the golf course on the north side and then big lots all the way around it, which offer long lines of sight. But when you're on foot with crowds and cars and trees and easy ups in the tailgate lots, it's hard to see very far at all. The mobile observation tower being up up to 30 feet with the cameras up at that height will really um, increase the line of sight that officers have to see what's going on in, in these areas there. It will allow the officer who's in the tower there to direct response to any incident that occurs in a fan fest or a tailgate lot and will provide video evidence of anything that did occur. So the observation tower is also equipped with police lights and a PA system on it which will serve as a landmark rally point for, for, for people in these golf lots. One of the common things that we have at the Rose Bowl is if a, if a person outside calls for help, they have a hard time explaining where they are because the golf lots all look the same, the lots are all big, and then we have a hard time finding them. So having this elevated tower can serve as a landmark there so we can direct them to the tower or activate the, the PA, activate a siren on there to draw them so that they can direct us to where they are so that we can help them. A few months ago, I met with uh, Rose Bowl CEO Jens Wyden and Assistant General Manager Derek Doolittle to discuss the best ways to use the mobile observation tower at the Rose Bowl to su supplement their existing cameras and their existing security measures. And they both agree that having the tower at the Rose Bowl will be a real asset. The other way that we plan on using this is in commercial high theft areas. So, Nationwide, property crimes, which is burglary, theft, and vandalism, are the most common crimes, and Pasadena is no different. Th these are mainly in commercial areas and significantly, and have a severe negative effect on businesses in those areas that, that are being stolen from. A common issue in these crimes is the lack of investigative leads. Even stores that have cameras, it's a lot of times just poor quality, and there's not always a lot to go on to investigate. We plan on putting the, the mobile observation tower in these um, high theft commercial areas to act both as a deterrent and to provide evidence, um, including suspect descriptions, sus suspect vehicles, hopefully license plates, these kind of things for any crimes that, that do occur there. The cameras also have a streaming 
capability. So they can be monitored from an officer at the PD. So it, it, it acts um, as a force multiplier where we can have a deterrent and evidence gathering tool in those areas without having to have an officer there. Another area that we plan on using it is in Old Town, Colorado, in the, on Colorado and Old Town, on the, the business area there. All of, all of these areas are areas that are public, commercial, and there's no expectation of privacy when it comes to video. There's no intent on putting it in neighborhoods or this is, uh, it's commercial areas uh, where there is not that expectation of privacy in re regards to being on camera. As an example, um, the shopping center on East Foothill that includes Dick's Sporting Goods, Nordstrom Rack, Best Buy, Ulta, in the last three months there, so since, since May 1st, we've had 66 incidents there reported. Who knows how many have gone unreported there. That's one example of an area where we would plan on putting this mobile observation tower to both, again, act as a deterrent and gather evidence of any crime that takes place there. I previously mentioned the ballistic protection. So the National Institute of Justice is the research, development, and evaluation agency of the US Department of Justice. And they set the national standards for ballistic protection. They came up with five different armor protection levels, and they're listed here, 2A, 2, 3A, 3, and 4. Level 4 is the only one that consistently stops rifle fire. This is important for us because having an officer in there, that officer is obviously stuck and we need to adequately protect them against any attack that may occur, especially since they're in that position and they can't escape. So this is a way of offering that officer protection there. Mobile observation towers have grown in popularity across the country as, as property crimes increase. Um, Agencies, and not just law enforcement agencies, but malls, uh, you've probably seen similar ones. There's um, LA Metro has, has them at train stations along the way there. They've grown in popularity. It's estimated that approximately 200 different agencies across the country are currently using these observation towers. Um, some local agencies here in Southern California that are using them are LA Metro, San Diego County Sheriff's Department, San Diego PD, El Cajon PD, and Escondido PD. Following Pasadena guidelines, a notice inviting bids for the mobile observation tower was issued. The bid was downloaded by 15 vendors and resulted in two completed bids. There's no vendors in Pasadena that, that offer these towers. The two companies that Submitted bids are ReconView and Safeware. Although S S Safeware put a bid in, but acknowledged that theirs, their tower does not offer ballistic protection. So ReconView was the only one that met our guidelines. This mobile observation tower f furthers Pasadena's goal of ensuring public safety. The, the cost of the, this tower is not expected to exceed $400,000 here. And the, the money is coming from two main sources. 213,000 of it, roughly here, is from an existing grant that we have for, through FEMA. It's a UASI grant there. And the remaining 187,000 is coming from PD funds out of the general fund. The 400,000 includes a $15,000 buffer in case of any unexpected increases along the way of purchasing this tower. Lastly here, this is a recon view tower that is currently used by an agency in Ohio. This is a non-ballistic one, but I wanted to put a picture so you have a general idea of what the tower will look like. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Bundy. We're gonna start with um, public comments and then we'll go around the dais for commissioner's questions. We have any public comments on this item, Frankie? We do have public comments. I do have one from Yadi. 
Welcome, Yari. Yari, you have three minutes. Oh, no, I want to look at your notes. No? <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to try to get this really, really quick. I don't know if there was an explanation of why this is being purchased. Uh, there's instances of, why it, where, instances of where it would be used, but I don't understand why we have to purchase one instead of perhaps renting it and um, for such a small number of uses. And why can't the Rose Bowl purchase their own? Right, and um, you know, it w one of the things that was said is that 200 agencies across the country use it. That's across the country, and the examples of California that were given were all in San Diego County. Who in LA County is using this? And then it said that it was also one of many things is that it would serve as a deterrent. In Hastings Village, they, they said that there were 66 incidents. There is a tower up there with CCTV cameras that's privately run, owned and run. So it's not been a deterrent there, okay? Concerns, of course, there's the surveillance at 24-7, live feed. Who in the world has access to that? You know, what is the re data retention gonna be with that? It's, and then in the presentation, it was uh, touted as added benefits, but it's just looking at scope creep. You acquire this technology and then you use it for many more purposes and then it, you, you show that it has like added value. Is this the first, only one? How many more of these are we gonna be seeing across the city? And are there any personnel needed or is there someone gonna be in some back office that's looking at us? And it is wild to me to hear that there is no expectation of privacy when the state of California was the first one to have a whole agency dedicated to protecting and strengthening our privacy. The state legislature has a whole committee on privacy protections and I, work on dozens of bills every year to strengthen our privacy. So no, it, it is absolutely bonkers. Yes, we do have an expectation of privacy. I do, definitely. So I really wanna hear what the prohibited uses are gonna be, what, what's gonna happen with the data retention, and um, you know what the ongoing costs of this are gonna be. Like, you know, in the military equipment report, we saw that the mobile command center was not used not once for any incidents. It was only for PR and events. Again, this is like scope creep. So please, let's get like a use policy in place. And, and really, I wanna, I wanna see in practice the, the saying from the police department that we're trying to build trust, show us, show us. Thank you. Thank you. We also have Adriana. Hold on a second. Were there any questions that she had that you can answer? There was a lot of stuff in there, ma'am. I'd need a it was a lot. guidance on which one you'd want me it to It was answer. a lot. Um, let me ask this, um, because I know this, this is a public meeting, so I'm not trying to hide any of the questions and answers, but that was a, that was a lot to answer. And Anthony, I'd like to know if there is a way that we could um, like retain those answers at a later time. Is there any kind of way that we can do that? Like if we could, <laughs> if we could have those questions pulled and sent to the lieutenant for him to respond back, like is that something that's possible? Because there's a, there a lot in there and I'm, I can't say I'm not interested. And I'm sure that a lot of the CPOC members will have some of those questions as well. So I just wanted to be, sh be sure of the best way to handle this. I, I mean, my suggestion would be to complete the public comments. I'm not sure how many additional public comments we have. Uh, and then we can put together a list of questions that the commissioners can ask the police department. I mean, I've taken some notes here on some of the questions. Yeah. I mean, renting versus buying yeah. was a question. Uh, use policy. Um, some of the questions may get more into to legal issues that the commission itself uh, cannot answer. Some right. of the, the uh, privacy issues uh, that have been raised, um, that may be ultimately a decision for the city attorney's office, but certainly there's there's other questions that were asked that could be discussed. I would just suggest we, we make our list, complete the public comments, and then 
each commissioner is free to, to ask any of those questions or, okay. or you can as the chair. Okay. So you get off the hot seat. <laughs> For now? Yes. And we'll bring up um, our next public comment is from Adriana. Thank you, Anthony. Hello. Um, something that stood out to me was um, Officer or Lieutenant Bundy saying they have no intent of putting it in neighborhoods, but he didn't say they're ruling that out. And so that's a really big concern to me. And I want to urge the body, if they just have no intent, that's not enough for me. Um, that needs, to, and my next question is then, what is the approval look like when it comes before this body? Does this body have the power to reject such a um, equipment purchase? Because um, this is uh, $190,000 of our general fund. And that to me is also not sitting right, especially when um, their main priority are um, the giant um, commercial center on Foothill, where by the way, every time I go there, I see Officer Palacios, who is the same officer who is known to be very aggressive. There's a lawsuit out on him right now for um, physically restraining and face planting a child who actually was having a, um, uh, an outburst due to the fact that his father was murdered by the LA Sheriff's Department um, not even a month prior to that. Um, and he had family on the scene with him who were there. And, um, and Officer Crutchfield actually was trying to de-escalate this Officer Palacios. And in turn, he actually aggressed towards her. And the, that's who I see. Um, every time I go to the um, Dick's Sporting Goods, I pass Dick's Sporting Goods, and he's always there. So if this, why aren't any of those companies asked to, you know, through their commerce uh, group, like pitch in towards this if they really want to buy it? And we need a policy that forbids this from being in a residential neighborhood. Um, uh, and you know, Rose Bowl can certainly throw money this way too. We've we've bailed them out twenty million dollars in like less than seven years or something like that. So um, yeah, we, uh, I just I it really I I don't like the idea of this because we see the we've seen the mobile command be in um, Northwest Pasadena as a fear mongering tactic, and I would not. I would not put it behind them to do the same thing with this as well. Thank you, Adriana. Do we have any more public comments, Frankie? There are no further public comments, but we did receive written comments and we posted them on our website and also distribute them to the commission. Thank you, Frankie. Who wants to go first? Teddy is first. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Lieutenant Bundy, for being here. Um, I've seen a lot of those towers, especially the one on uh, Lake in Washington by the gas station. Yes, sir. And then I've seen the one on, uh, what is it, Walnut and Lake, the Ralphs? Yes, sir. Uh, to me, being a business owner and uh, several attempts of... Uh, my car being broken into at Restaurant Depot, where now I see that we, have, we park a police officer's car at Restaurant Depot, because a lot of the merchants that come to shop there, they keep constantly getting their cars broken into, and their computers and money being stolen. One thing we might not see eye to eye in this commission, and I love being on this commission. To me, growing up in Pasadena, my main concern for the citizens is safety for Pasadena. And it's amazing to me, especially now learning to see the public comments and everybody else talking, is why we would not want to support safety. Now, a, a lot of people, um, for example, they're saying let the other business owners pitch in. Well, in reality, a lot of businesses are closing down. 
The theft of ultra makeups in that area has gone up. Just a couple of months ago, the looters hit uh, Foot Locker by my restaurant, where they actually parked the car right at my restaurant. Seven group of young people. So to me, my main concern is safety. I feel like if somebody says that, okay, we're pitching in 190000 in our general fund, what is an officer's pay per year? Over 160, let's say 150. So within two years, without an officer being present, we have a safety of monitoring a location, correct? So I'm a strong believer in, okay, let's say we have issues with officers. Yes, officers are stepping out of line. Yes, officers are doing this and that. But if I know that my community is safe by having it, whether it's at the Rose Bowl, or whether having it in Old Town where my business is at, or commercial locations like Restaurant Depot, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer of, okay, we have issues with officers, but why do we have issues with a unit that is full-time monitoring? And in the time of an event, we can know exactly what happened, who did what, and what happened where. To me, if somebody says, oh, I don't believe in this, this is against my, you know, my privacy, this and that, and what do you have to hide? It's in the commercial area, and if you're guaranteeing us it's going to be in a commercial area, not in a residential area, then I'm a strong believer of this unit. I'm sorry, and that's my opinion. Thank you. Commissioner Verrett. I have two questions. Uh, in this, uh, you mentioned the protection the officer has by yes, making sure it's there. Is there ability for the officer to shoot from that? No, ma'am. And are you talking about gun ports? Yes. Because that was in our that was in the bid, um, the, the open bid. Because it's an option that the towers, some towers provide. We're not getting gun ports. There's uh, we don't need them. So no, that, that answer your question. No. Okay. And then the the next question I have is, as we add more and more technology, and I'm I'm I, since I don't know, you can tell me. It seems like each of the technology pieces we add has its own platform. Is there one place that brings all of these together? So for example, is there a place where information from one of these can be put together with information from license plate readers, for example, to give the whoever is observing this like more than one source of information? Or do they have to open and close different platforms to be able to see those two things as examples. Sure. Um, that is a real challenge, even with ju just in regular life. Uh, if you have m multiple bank accounts, you have different apps for everything. The, the police department is no different. Um, there's a lot of different programs that we use. Um, and to answer your, your question specifically on this video with the license plate readers, no, there is not joint, no joint program where that can you can look, look at them in the same screen on the same program. Pasadena is trying to address this. Uh, the city is by trying to uh, get camera footage all on the same platform, uh, Genetech. So be because there's a lot of different departments, everybody has their own cameras, and it turns into a hodgepodge of different cameras. So we can look at ours, but we can't look at this building and so forth. So, so Pasadena is pushing the Genetech platform and these cameras, that was in our bid also, that it has to conform with the Genetech. So it will conform with the rest of Pasadena's, because okay. the city of Pasadena's cameras. Okay. And then lastly, just a, a comment. I think that uh, this can be valuable for the reasons you stated. Uh, Pasadena does have some uniqueness in the fact that we put on the Rose Parade and we do have these venues where I can see line of sight would be important. But I also am sensitive to the fact that um, it is necessary to have uh, boundaries placed on use and policies do that. And if there's, so my comment is, is I think with the adequate protections of a policy, I don't see there would be any concern um, as far as being filmed in in public? I think if you you can't don't, if if you don't like the idea of being filmed everywhere you go, don't go to London. I mean, you can't even 
chew gum without them seeing you on camera there. But I think what happens is, is that there's a, I, I'm sensitive to the concern about privacy. So my last question is, given that, is there going to be a specific use policy for this device, or are you just going to fold it into your basic policies uh, that are existing? Sure. So as part of this program, I reached out to multiple agencies that have these towers and asked them that, that same policy question. Do you have a policy? And if so, can I get a copy of it and look at it? Many agencies, for instance, El Cajon, LA Metro, which is in LA County, the Metro one has the towers, they do not have policies on them. Um, San Diego PD does not have a specific policy, but theirs is a different situation. They use their cameras on their towers as a live feed only, so they're not currently recording on them. Um, the agencies that I did get policies from, Arlington PD in Texas, Summit County in Ohio, their policies, none of them mention any privacy issues because the intent of the tower is to be used in big event areas or c commercial areas where there is no expectation of privacy f from cameras. Yes, we all have some expectation of privacy in some form from searches and that kind of thing, but from being on cameras, what I'm talking about. Their policies just talked about um, how to use it how to properly tow it without damaging it, who's responsible for it, how to raise the tower, how to use the cameras, that kind of thing was, was their policy. None of them mentioned any privacy concerns for the reasons I, I explained. I think the other issue with the policy is, um, I mean, I'm not doubting your word that you won't use it in certain areas, but that's the other thing is the policy could have a framework of what situations and what neighborhoods and what district kind of commercial areas only and that sort of thing could be included as well. So in order to, to get back to my question, so is it the uh, police department's plan to create a policy or not create a policy? We will create a policy, at least in regards to the procedures as to how to use it, like the, the, the policies that I described. We haven't done that yet because we don't have the tower yet, so we don't know how to use it. So once we get it and are trained on it and understand it, then we'll put together that kind of policy. Um, as opposed, er, in regards to as of where it's used, um, yes, we have, I mean, I don't know how to guarantee that some crazy thing wouldn't happen. I can't imagine a scenario at this point where we would put it in a residential neighborhood. That's not what it's for. It's for the Rose Bowl and commercial areas. That's the, that's the intent. Um, I, I don't know how to promise that anymore. Yes. I don't think that there's an issue with developing a specific policy for specific uses, and so we'll evaluate that, um, certainly with this group, um, the IPA and others, um, to kind of establish a policy that gives us some comfort that we're only going to be using it in the places that we state we're going to use it, and there should be limited um, opportunities for that. So the commercial areas, uh, the Rose Bowl, um, other high-intensity elements like the Rose Parade, some of those top seer events that the federal agencies are assisting us with um, would be where we want to do that. And we would provide examples of those, um, maybe in a policy that says up to, but not limited to, and et cetera. And in emergency situations, if you get a problem where we need elevated observation for, for certain things, um, those would definitely be exceptions that have to be approved at the highest levels of the organization. But generally, we should be able to spell out a policy of a general specific use for the tool. Thank you for that, Chief. Commissioner Larvey. Hi, thank you. Um, two questions. Yes, sir. Over here, yeah. Um, uh, the first question is, um, I mean, I can absolutely understand the advantage of having higher vantage point, especially in a crowd control type of situation. Um, and, the, and the report goes to different bids on this specific type of solution. But, but have, have you looked through and considered tactical alternatives so if you have just cameras elevated without an officer up there, then you don't need ballistic protection, and that seems like that would be less expensive and not put an officer at risk um, in a static position. And, and the, the issue of, a, you mentioned a rally point. So if someone were in distress and ran to the camera, is there a phone where they can communicate with anyone on the device? Or, or would blue light phones throughout the Rose Bowl parking area or high-risk areas be an alternative that would 
afford us at a less expensive uh, cost point the same type of advantages. So can you get there with, with other with other means um, other than just this specific tower that raises an officer to a vulnerable static position. And this, the second question, um, if it's okay to ask them both, or do you want a minute to answer? I can answer those two. Okay. Uh, this those were combined, A, B, yeah. <laughs> second part first as to um, yeah. the blue phone thing. So every, at the Rose Bowl in the golf lots, or the, the golf course and lots around it, we break them up into different lots and there's officers assigned to each lot. So it wouldn't be the officer in the tower that, that's helping that person. The officers assigned to the lot would respond to the tower and meet the person there. Um, so it'd just be like a gathering point where a landmark, because there's not many in the golf course areas, it'd be a landmark for the person to go to and meet the officer who's going to help. But it's not, it's not a portable, it's not a portable um, uh, panic button type of device that's available to the public in that area then. It, it's just something that they can see and run to, and someone will meet them there. So it just seems like an opportunity. If, you know, if if part of the reason for the purchase is that people can rapidly seek help by identifying this landmark, and there's no way to actually communicate with the officer who's 30 feet up or other people around, it seems like that's an oversight on design. But um, but but my real question is like what what. Less expensive tactical alternatives have we considered looking to achieve the same public safety goals, but perhaps not with some of the downside of this particular device? Sure. So those, the, the towers, the, there are plenty of towers out there, a small trailer, like you mentioned, sir, with, uh, that we have here in town at the Ralphs on Walnut Lake. Those are generally, I don't know, uh, maybe 10 to 12 feet tall, and it's camera only. And if somebody's monitoring the, the, them actively, um, which I don't know if somebody is 24-7. There's multiple cameras on them. This one goes up to 30 feet, and there's just no, um, in my experience, there's no real um, bypass or for, for having a person with judgment that can look around and get, get an overall view. There's just no overcoming that. Um, intelligence is great via cameras, via technology, but having a person involved who can make decisions and give nuance and look around instead of being locked in. We see this with BWCs. You have a camera which shows this, but this is what's going on. And so having a person there helps. It's just, there's just no alternative or no, um, I'm blanking on the word right now. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I just am concerned that the officer is both vulnerable and 30 feet off the ground. And so what they're seeing is, is sort of airborne panorama of what's going on, and they're relying on the high-definition cameras anyway. So couldn't you just put a longer pole and, and stream to the mobile command center at a lower cost and use the mobile command center in some fashion to achieve maybe not exactly the same objective, but very close to the same objective? Right. Um, I mean, that's also the kind of thing I think that just different opinions on, but we believe having an officer up there is is just the offers a great benefit that can't be replicated by having the cameras in there. And over then that outweighs the risk of having them needing ballistic protection. Y yes, a, sir, because since every lot that we break it up into has their own assigned officers, if anything happens, if there's an attack on the tower, say, he'll be able to call for help and the officers in that area will respond. Okay. And at least he can take it. He's safe in the tower until they get there. And, and the this, this second question, um, and maybe is Richard still on the line, right? Richard? Yes. You there? Yes. Um, you know, we, we talk about use policies, um, and that was definitely brought up in public comment regarding this device, and the technology is changing so fast. Uh, and I, and I, rather than develop use policies, you, obviously you have to do a policy and procedure for each device because of how you use the device. But if, if the use policy in general has to do with principles of surveillance and what the city and the police force are, are willing to commit to in terms of surveillance, a single integrated use policy for all surveillance equipment might make some sense that has principles laid out in what can be captured and where it can be captured. So there's a difference between capturing video of a public space versus capturing someone's cell phone data, obviously. 
you know, so when we talked about the cell site simulator, there was a different discussion. We're going to keep doing one-offs. Is This is just my comment, and I'm sure. hoping Richard can weigh in. We're going to keep doing one-offs on use policy for every technology that comes along unless we have a set of principles that apply to all surveillance that balance privacy concerns versus public safety concerns. And feel free to respond to just throwing that out there that it might make sense to outline what those principles are, as Chief Harris was alluding to, and, and um, in one integrated policy. I understand comment, and yeah, I don't, it's, it's kind of like um, uh, Ms. Verrett's comment about the different screens, how many, you know, different applications. Every technology, each technology serves a different purpose and is specifically geared toward one thing or another, and so it seems to, I, to your point, each one needs its own rules because they're each a little different um, right. Each one needs its own rules, but if they're all used for surveillance, then the principles of surveillance might, this would allow us to draft those policies for each piece of equipment more easily because we'd just be adhering to our previously agreed upon principles. They basically stem from, and this doesn't totally answer, but just the legal guidelines um, with the expectation of privacy, search and seizure. Uh, the rules are different, as we've talked about here, walking outside through a commercial zone to having an officer download your phone. There's very different, so as long as the, the law is followed in each of the different technology areas, that's what our guideline is. Commissioner Matthews? Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> this might uh, satisfy Commissioner Lurvy. It's regarding the cause. Yes, sir. And I'm, you might have mentioned it in your presentation, Lieutenant, and I apologize if I missed it. But are there any uh, grant programs out there that might assist the city in purchasing this item? Yes, sir. So out of the cost, um, let me find that page here, um, 213000 of it is going to be covered by a grant that we currently okay. have already for, from the federal government, from FEMA. And that grant is um, – it's – specifically to, to help ag agencies get technology, though that's one of the areas of it, and that's why we're using that grant money to fund uh, over half of this tower. Okay, so we're talking about 200000 would would go towards the purchase, and the rest would be, be from the city's coffer? 213000 from this grant, okay. sir, and then that leaves about 187000 from Pasadena money. Okay, does that help, Richard? I mean... Larry, does that help? <laughs> no, that was in the presentation. I saw that in the presentation. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. that. I so, Thank you. Yeah, that, that isn't the question was my question was more about tactical alternatives. But okay, yeah. But thank you. Sure. Um, it, let's say we've got like five hundred thousand dollars sitting there in the in the police budget. And it's, there's no strings attached to it. It has, doesn't have to go to technology. Is there a process uh, that you go through to say, okay, these are our highest priorities in terms of what we need, and here's why? Uh, what I have in mind is something that uh, was occurring in the county as I was leaving public service 20 years ago. And they were trying to set up a model where, okay, if we add three deputy sheriffs, and how many more public defenders do we have to add? How many more uh, district attorneys do we have to add? Investigators, do we need how many more jails, much more jail space do we need? And then I think there was some a concern or effort to say, well, if we put in a, a public health worker or a mental health worker instead, or we have it two to one, and there's data to support the, the algorithm, whatever they are, is there, is, are there, is there that kind of public policy management tool, does that exist? And uh, does the Pasadena Police Department have them? And do you, or, or what is your process for figuring out what your priorities are uh, uh, where you have, you, there's equipment you want uh, in compare that, well, we can get that equipment versus some other thing, cameras, uh, additional officers, uh, more mental health treatment. How do you decide among those things? Right. This may be a question for the chief. <laughs> See if I, let me see if I can feel that one. Uh, what happens with um, outside of 481, outside of the military equipment purchases that have to go through its own process? 
Generally, we identify strategies and, and, and tactics that we need to use at the beginning of a fiscal year or at the beginning of whatever the operational cycle is. And we determine, um, based on all of the departments that are going to be involved throughout the police, or I'm sorry, throughout the city. throughout the city so that there's engagement department wide on what those needs are going to be. So as an example, uh, we're talking about software or, or tactical alternatives um, and what the applications are. So the police department may come across um, a brand new technology, um, a brand new type of software, but we don't know the first thing about the details of that type of software. So we have to include do it, our, our uh, computer folks. And so between us and do it and the finance department and then all the way up through the city manager's office and then over across to the city council who gives ultimate approval we work through all of those uh, all of those details that each department brings together and then we run it up and have it approved uh, there are some finance guidelines um, that if it's above a certain amount it has to be approved by council if it's between a certain amount it has to be approved by the city manager and at the lower end of that scale there's some amount uh, at a very low end of that that the police chief can can authorize uh, or the department head can authorize and so there are a lot of people involved before the authorization to give it uh, happens and there's a strategy to it from a prioritization standpoint so one example is the meeting that we have with our IT folks every month there's a meeting where we sit down and we look at here are the police department's wishes here are the police department's desires as far as priority then do it will come in and sit down and say well here's our priority and how we can implement these things and somewhere we've got to figure out how to manage that so that we're getting the best bang for the buck and typically it's going to be um, do it that wins out because they have to have the staff that can implement the software or implement the hardware or implement the stations for which all of this stuff is going to work so there are a lot of elements to making that decision and that's why it usually takes an expanded amount of time to get uh, purchases and procurement done but yes, there is a strategy, the short answer. I, I assume that, I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Serrano? Thank you, Chief and Lieutenant. Um, I appreciate this presentation, but will confess I just feel very upset and bothered by this presentation and the potential acquisition of this device, especially hearing that we don't have a policy for it yet, and yet there's a desire. And I heard you, Lieutenant, say, um, we don't know how to use it yet, so we don't have the policy for it. And I can't imagine that that is an operating practice for the department, that it doesn't know how to use a particular gun, but is going to go ahead and get it and figure it out and then develop the policy around it. So I, I'm, I'm thinking back on our cell site simulator conversation, and I think it was uh, at the ask of the council that before that purchase be approved, that there would be work done by the department to establish a policy for its use. And then that policy was part of the consideration for the acquisition of, of that. So I don't expect a response for that at all, but um, I, I'm just kind of letting you and, and my fellow commissioners and the public know kind of where my head is at at this point in time. And, and uh, you know, to the point of cost, which I think um, some of my, my fellow commissioners um, have addressed and even our vice chair, um, you know, I, I, I get that the literal cost here is about $400,000. And, and great, we're using grant funds and we're only using $187,000 of the general fund. I'm assuming that that means that that's not PD dollars, right? So this is not part of the PD budget, but we're tapping into general fund dollars to, to get that $187,000. That is PD money. It is PD money. So yes, this is part of your annual operating budget. You're devoting $187,000 of your budget for this. That's correct. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so... I want to talk about the other kind of cost, right? It's not the literal money monetary cost, but what the cost is of bringing in a piece of equipment like this into our community. And, you know, I look at this image and I can't look at it for very long because it, um, it just feels quite disturbing to look at the mobile observation um, unit. You know, it, it reminds me, quite frankly, um, of my experience visiting Manzanar and uh, looking at that prison internment camp and the observation towers that were part of that experience in Manzanar. And I, maybe some of us can think of some other examples of, of how these kinds of um, 
visuals, though for you know for various uses, um, create a feeling by members of the public. Create a feeling in me, quite frankly. So uh, you know what is what is the not non-monetary cost for bringing in something like this into the community, right? If the hope would be that bringing in a surveillance tool like this into a commercial area that is experiencing a lot of burglaries, robberies, um, how does that improve business by putting this mobile unit in uh, on site? I mean, if I, I hear you posturing that that would help improve public safety and maybe in prove business in that particular area. But I think many of us, if we knew that we were needing to shop in a particular area where that observation tower was, I, I, I would be less likely to shop in that area because that, that tool is in that, in that parking lot or on that property or whatever. So um, again, I don't expect for you to have an answer to this uh, at all, but I'm just articulating that there is the literal money cost for bringing a tool like this into the community, and then there's the cost that it has in terms of what we're all here for, which is improving the police department's relationship with members of the community and having a relationship of mutual trust and respect. I, I'm not sure that a tool like this um, in our community would do anything to advance that. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm going to offer a different perspective. Um, so, so, so first, I, I want us to be very clear on making a distinction between crime and safety, because that that those two words have been floated around a lot today, um, right? Because not not necessarily, you know, crime you, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily equate, you know, to safety. Like for example, me me and, and a fellow commissioner can engage in, in recreational drugs today, and we'd be fine. But 15 years ago, we'd be criminalized, right? So that that. The, the two are not, you know, necessarily correlated. And the reason why I say that is because um, I'm hearing a lot of putting this in areas with high crime, right? And I understand the the perspectives of someone who who has a family who owns a business in Pasadena on Colorado Boulevard, who grew up in Dina, who went to Marshall, just like my brother Teddy, go Eagles and understands right the the the, the very the, the seriousness of of and the responsibility of owning a business in Pasadena but at the same time i want to ask you a question you know what if this this tower this this device doesn't work then what what if what if it doesn't deter any 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 crime do we get two do we get three do we get four you know th th you know then what do we do Right, and, and the reason why I want to make that very clear is because people don't just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to rob me someone today. I'm going to rob me a business today, right? You know, people engage in theft in particular, not because they want to, but because of poverty, right? And, and that's a completely different conversation than what we're having right now. So the, and the reason why that's important to note is because, like a fellow commissioner mentioned, this tower emulates something some, something something to what can be called as panopticism or, or a panopti panopticon, which is a which is essentially like a fellow commissioner described uh, like a jail tower or a prison tower, and it's essentially bringing out incarceration practices out into the public, which makes me also very uneasy and 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 has been proven to show that is inhumane is oppressive and potentially causes psychological harm to people who have to be around that, right? So I, I, I wanna close out by saying this. We mentioned in, in the past different technologies like the cell tower simulator that needed policies to be brought forth before they can even be purchased that were rented out again, correct me if I'm wrong, but that were rented out without a policy in place. And now we're talking about jumping the gun and purchasing an additional surveillance tech piece of technology without any mention of any of, of, of any rental you, I mean, well, to quote, your, to quote you, you said that the department doesn't even know how to use it. So I just, I don't, I don't understand how we've gotten to this point where we're looking to kind of get get the green light on on purchasing a, a piece of equipment that can arguably hurt our community and isn't even 
the best practices haven't even put, been put in place for us to even talk about procurements and purchasing in the first place. First of all, I want to start off with something that you said, which was Metro has them. I am on the Metro Public Safety Committee, which is kind of something similar to this, which covers LA. Metro has them and has them at different spaces. No, they don't have a policy because it's Metro. But let me flip it to you, that the minute that the Metro Police, which um, the supervisors have voted for, to have um, their own police force, the minute that that gets reinstated, all of those cell towers, all of those towers have to be in policy. That was, that was definitely not just how to use them, but with a policy. And also, let me bring it back to you. Metro has been suffering with drugs, with killings, with shootings, all surrounded by these towers, right? Hasn't stopped any crime. In fact, it kind of increased it. There was an idea to put it at MacArthur Park, which was pulled down by the community. Because who wants to, as Commissioner Rao said, want to see what looks like when <laughs> most of our black and brown community, especially males coming out of incarceration, see those, those towers all the time, right? And so let's be clear in the fact of how he said there's, there's safety and there's this. But let me go back a little bit further because I feel all of this is a little slick. Last time with the cell site simulator, the PPD went to council and you went to council to say, hey, we want to purchase this thing. And when you went to went purchase it, council, because of the um, public comments and everything, it got pulled back and and council said, well, no, you don't have a policy. So we, we're not going to green light you and vote you. You need to take it over to CPOC and let CPOC, as Commissioner Serrano said, and we created the policy for this cell site simulator. This today is coming to, to say, hey, can, you, can CPOC green light this tower so we can then go to council to say we've sent it to CPOC and they're okay with it, so we won't make the mistake that we made before. And so I just wanna put that, cause that's an elephant in the room to me. And if there isn't, if council said that there needed to be a policy for cell site simulator, which is a very important technology, to stand here and maybe say that this doesn't need a policy because you don't know how to use it as yet, but other jurisdictions, as you said, around the country does have a policy where they have or where communities have pushed back on it because of the look of it. Yes, the Rose Bowl, it's totally understandable. Um, yes, um, the Rose Parade, but even to have it down Old Town, really? I mean, like you said, People, people don't want their privacy. But what's the worst case scenario? That people see this cell tower and now Old Town ain't the place to be. As Mr. Teddy said, it's all about the business, right? But if the business, if people are not feeling comfortable, it's okay if I have my phone and I'm being filmed. It's okay if I know that the, the shop has a camera or I'm in the restaurant. But to have this high tower looking down on me, as I'm just trying to enjoy myself or go shop, we have to think, sometimes we have to think of the variables of what could be the cause and effect. And safety doesn't always make everybody feel good, as you've heard tonight, it doesn't. And the idea that the policy doesn't say that district one, three and five, because when you do the research on these towers, which was presented to us at, at Metro, most of it is for high crime areas. And so I throw myself in the future. When we have a high crime incident in District 1, District 3, District 5, oh, I think this is a good time to throw out the tower 
because the tower, we, we need it in high crime areas. This will never be seen in District 7. I mean, this will never be seen in District 4. This will never be seen in District 2. It's not, it's not about that. And then you also say that you need this elevation. You've already requested that you need drones. How much elevation plus helicopters are we needing? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. That is all of this and all of this and all of this equating to catch whatever it is that, we're, that you're looking to say that your um, studies can say that you've you know, caught a lot of, of people. You know what I'm saying? Because this technology, cell site simulators, we were told was, okay, we need it so we can find people in crowds and we can find the person and get the person and bring, and bring them in and we, we use it and we have to get a warrant, right? Now, this is sitting up here. The, the only question I have, and you can ask it while I'm in, in this monologue, is does the one that you're purchasing have windows? Yes, it has windows. But. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. So, the idea of of um, of um, of this is is that this technology for the cell site simulator, you've also asked it or or thinking about or requesting for drones. So, who's helping who in all of this? Because this feels with all your military. Uh, armory that you still haven't given us all the policies that attach to all the military stuff, but that's another day, is feeling like it's another toy that is surveillancing the community and you're using it to, and crime isn't happening. Just like a public comment said, this big command vehicle that you, you, you purchased and it's got the bells and the whistles and everything is, is rarely used. It's, it's, it's only used for PR or events. It, it's just not there. So it, it, it's kind of sitting there, hopefully waiting for, the, for, for a really bad critical incident, as Teddy said, so we can feel safe, right? And so I'm feeling some type of way. I'm so feeling some type of way that and the word I'm going to say is the audacity, right? That this, the, you, this should have gone to council first. Maybe this should have gone to council because this equipment should have gone to council and then council could have said to you, go and get the policy and make sure the CPOC create the policy. And then maybe you wouldn't have had to stand here and say, we don't have to have a policy because other places don't have a policy. This is Pasadena. And this commission was created to, as Teddy said, to bring safety to police officers and to community. And that's what policies do. And I think that's really, really important rather than the cost of 400 and something thousand dollars so a police officer can sit up and look over and watch people and live stream. And not one time have I heard you say, one in the in the description is when does that when does that who gets that information of 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 the recording when does it get deleted right when does it get deleted if there's no crime and you're just watching the rose bowl game and all the rose bowl game and there was nothing that happened right all of that 2 or 3 hours of watching people where does that where does that um recording go to who, who is in charge of, of, of the, like stop and start, right? And who is trained, because that wasn't in the presentation, who's trained for this equipment? Who has the, uh, the or all of the, how can I put it, the commands? Because we heard that in the cell site simulator. There was a lot of different people who had, had command levels. And I think all of those things have to come to pass because the community needs to hear that because this is not something that I think I want to say that the community really feel, but 
like others, businesses and all the rest of it, have a different point of view. But because you won't say that it will not go into residential areas for, for, for situations, right? Even though you say there's a policy, you can override the policy if the situation is there because you have the equipment. Because I have seen the SWAT team that has come down Navarro and, 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 and for no apparent reason and done what they wanted in that community. And it's just hard to see that that tower, that prison tower will be in our community. And you guys want to, you guys want to spend $400,000 without coming with a policy. That's a, that's, that's a lot to swim in. Thank you, Lieutenant Bundy, for your presentation and Chief Harris for your acknowledgement of the need for policy. I do recall the issue with the cell tower and it is important. Part of what you're hearing, you're hearing varied perspectives, but what strengthens a relationship with the community is not only to present what it will offer, which you have, but also your voicing the concerns, the anticipated concerns because on around that, then policies are formed, right? That helps create the boundaries. So I think the opportunity is here. It is true that I can sense the you know, equipment. If I add up the requests, it seems like there have been a lot more equipment cost, uh, proposals than say mental health or some other things, but I know we have diverse services that we offer, so I am aware of that. But I am saying there is that sense in this moment I, about, trying to improve, um, whether it's the safety, improve the health of our community, but there's this other part that it really helps in terms of a relationship and honesty and just directness to not only say what you anticipate this will do. There are always pros and cons. When we don't hear the cons, that is of concern because we wonder, do you realize that? And that actually helps to how you implement it. So I'm just saying as we move forward in this, yes, I think we should have the policy. The policy should precede the purchase um, because that makes it more likely that if it is purchased, then it's going to do have a better implementation plan for our community and understanding around it. I know that's still a question whether it should be purchased and um, you're hearing those concerns, but I do wanna just say that. It really will help in presentations to not only present the pros, there's always cons. Even to the best thing, there's a con, at least one, and there are many cons here too. So I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you again. And I'm gonna sort of go back to some of the concerns from from Yadi and Adriana, um, but I'm gonna ask my question first. So this is a purchase for, for one? That's of correct. The, just one. That's correct. And so I'm trying to wrap my brain around understanding how you would move it because those shopping spaces that we're talking about, they don't, they don't move, they're not seasonal. I mean, maybe to some extent you're going to see more people shopping in certain times of year, but they don't, they don't move as opposed to football season and, you know, concert season. We have this block of time that where the Rose Bowl is really, really busy. And so I can, I can understand it being used, you know, from the concert season throughout the football season. But how would, how would we be moving it about like as like what's the as necessary sure it, you mean how does it f physically how do we move it no i mean like how do we how you decide when we're going to move it because i mean you gotta you might have a game on saturday and a busy shopping day on saturday like it can't be in both places right like i'm saying like holiday time right mm. so what does it look like even being able to have it in one space for a certain amount of time and then designating when it moves somewhere else Sure, so the priority w would be, well, prioritized. Generally, R Rose Bowl events, uh, the displacement events, it'll be at the Rose Bowl. If there does happen to be a conflict between a displacement event at the Rose Bowl 
and some other big event, then command staff will have to make a determination as to where it would be of most value and we'd put it there. That makes sense. Um, Chief already addressed the, um, the matter of a policy and um, I do look forward to figuring out what that looks like together. So I thank you for that invitation. Um, Commissioner Nang echoed Yadi on the data retention. Like, what does that look like for us? The video? Yeah. Sure. So in our bid, we put uh, it, it had to be kept for a minimum of two weeks. Basically, it comes down to how big the DVR is. What we anticipate is anywhere between two weeks to 30 days, and then it, it just rolls over itself so the, the old stuff is gone and anything that's new is, is, is on there. Okay. Um, I guess the specifying prohibited uses would be something that we could figure out during policy building. Um, Chief, is it feasible to, to sit down and start building policy ideas before you guys make this purchase? Thank you for that. He said yes, because he wasn't on the mic. Where? <laughs> um, I think we hit um, all the questions. Um, Honorable, and I, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Honorable Chair, did you, I, I mentioned I did a list. Do you want me to read a few additional ones? Yeah, if you could. And, and this is I mean, Because I, I tried to keep up because both Yadi and Adriana had some very valuable things. But if you could run down a list and. Yeah, this is from Yadi's uh, public comments uh, um, that I took notes on. Uh, some of the other questions, if it could be rented or leased. Um, why the Rose Bowl cannot either purchase it or cost share, um, the anticipated amount of use, um, and then a question that, that I suggest the commission ask, if it's your, it's your pleasure to do so, is when we anticipate this going to the city council, I don't know if I heard that. Sure. So as to the rented one, you can rent, not, not, not this specific one, but you can rent them. Um, I had a, saw a company locally that did. It was a, uh, between ten dollars and $15,000 per event. So with the amount of use that we expect to have, that we're planning on using this, that's just not, that doesn't make f financial sense. Um, what was the next one, sir? The shared costs. Oh, Rose Bowl. So... We're in a position where we don't control the Rose Bowl. Obviously, we would love to have money from a bunch of different s sources, and that may be an option in the future if, uh, if it works out as well as we expect it will at the Rose Bowl. They, they may decide that they would like another one and pitch in. But at this point, it was important enough to us that we decided to move f forward with the grant money covering over half of it and that we would pick up the rest. And when's it going to council? It's going to council. Uh, so we're at, um, I believe it's the 26th of this month, if that's a Monday. The 26th. It, it is, because my mom's birthday's on the 25th. <laughs> um, my fellow commissioners had um, very specific risk concerns and. Um, what I'd like to see from the department is actually having conversations with community stakeholders, not just folks within your department and retired from the department, because law enforcement has a different view than community oftentimes, and I don't think that that varies from district to district. I think that um, the human component is missing from this. Um, you were talking about, you know, the tower reminding you of certain trips. Um, I'm a big fan of, of, of things that captured um, various views of things that happened during the Holocaust. And so internment camps and prison camps, like that's really terrifying. And I don't think that um, the department fully considers the cost of trauma because one of those things that maybe not even from our own experiences and being in these spaces, but 
traumas are passed down generationally and I wouldn't want to be so disruptive to somebody else's soul and spirit and how they're experiencing going shopping. I know I've said it before, I'll say it again, all these technologies is terrifying. And um, I'm, I mentioned in our planning meeting earlier this morning that I rewatched um, the NACO training on surveillance tech and I didn't see these towers listed um, in, 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 the, in the stuff that they did on in that presentation. Um, it's really terrifying. Like we're really always being watched. We're pretty much always being recorded. That is really the norm. But putting it in a space where, as Commissioner Nang said, like if you're talking about getting drones, like how far up do we need to be? And why do we need to isolate an officer or even cameras in one of these towers? I same go to the shopping center in Foothill regularly and I know that there's always cars parked in front of Dick's. There's usually one or two. There's usually one over near Ross. Um, I'm aware because I've lived in Northwest Pasadena <laughs> for the last six years, um, it's almost seven years that I've lived in Northwest Pasadena and there's always a parked police car that I assume is, is recording. Um, often in my mom's neighborhood, there's a police car parked on Walnut that's not attended, that's recording. So I don't understand um, necessarily the need for this outside of potentially Rose Bowl and Rose Parade related events. Like I can understand, understand that part, but anywhere else feels like, um, it just feels real uncomfortable. And it does feel actually more unsafe than it feels safe. And I think that that's something that if, um, if we had folks from the department meet with people who are just people and have those conversations and understand what safety looks like to somebody else, we might be able to actually reimagine what public safety looks like in the city of Pasadena. I thank you for your time in this presentation. You had another question? Um, Honorable Chair, just uh, to give you a heads up, Frankie uh, informed me we do have an additional public comment. Wonderful. Um, so if you'd like to reopen that at your pleasure. I will. I will go Commissioner Nang, Serrano, we'll do public comments and we'll move along. I think I'm struggling with LAPD. <laughs> I hate giving them credit. But LAPD doesn't have a tower. And I'm thinking the Coliseum. I'm thinking so many places all around thing. I mean, Metro is just for their stations, so I get it. So I, I'm, I, I, I struggle to the fact that, and, and maybe it's a question that I'm gonna ask um, um, uh, LA folks is why is that they don't, they've never had a tower. And I'm thinking of all the businesses, all like Rodeo Drive. If you want to talk about shoplifting, they, they've had it. You know what I'm saying? They, they've been going through it. And there is, um, you know, personal, uh, you know, companies that have their own cell, cell towers and stuff like that. Just like, you know, you said Ralph's and, and at Foothill and um, Home Depot, or whatever. And sometimes it's on the business, and it still doesn't deter. Um, it still doesn't deter um, what what is about to happen. But what I'm really struggling with is that our most closest municipality and largest, with way more issues and problems than us, is it, it, there's no tower in Compton. There's no towers in Watts. I mean, they understand that that's not the look, right? And I'm very much sure when I ask the question, they're gonna say, that's not, uh, the community ain't even gonna have it, right? The community ain't gonna have it. They, well, they're, they're not even gonna go for it. So I'm struggling to say the why does Pasadena think that this is another save a Pasadena moment, save a Pasadena technology moment versus LAPD. And like you said, there's 200 around the country, but hardly many in California, right? Um, I, 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 could you answer that? Why, why is it that LAPD hasn't? I mean, it's hard for me to speak for LAPD. Um, every agency has their own priorities and their own tools and evidently they've chosen not to go this route. I can't really answer why though. 
Thank you, Chair. I just want to um, reiterate the expression of thanks that the Chief is willing to work on policy um, in advance of purchase of this technology. I think that will be a really important conversation for us to be in together. And one thing that occurred to me as our conversation was unfolding, and we've talked a lot about um, its potential use and, and a little bit about um, use that we hope would be prohibited, right? Like, we'd, I don't think any of us would ever want to see this in neighborhoods. But my hope, too, is that we would <coughs> never see this kind of surveillance tool used in public demonstrations. Um, I'm reminded, um, having been active uh, with some folks around this dais um, in Black Lives Matter, Matter protests um, back in 2019, 2020, and um, 2020, excuse me, and um, I saw the deployment of some of our more advanced tactical tools um, in those demonstrations. Um, one particular evening, right out here, City Hall, I think the the big bobcat looking device was, was taken out for a run. Um, <coughs> I think that's really problematic. So I just wanna, uh, uh, you know, kind of in the public for the record to note that I hope that we could um, develop some prohibited uses and that one of the prohibited uses would be the deployment of such technology for uh, public demonstrations. Thank you. I think that's a strong part of any policy development, so we can concur with that. And the other piece, just to um, tidy this up, is that I have absolutely no issue. In fact, it should be encouraged that we reach out to community members to get input. So we can do that in the formation of our policy. Thank you, Chief. Our public comment? We do have public comment via Zoom from David Yanis. David, go ahead, you have three minutes. David, go ahead. Seems like we're not getting a response via Zoom. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I just want to um, remind you all, as Anthony has told us before, we are community members here in the city of Pasadena. They will be at our city council meeting on the 26th. You're welcome to submit public comments with your stance on, on this technology. And with that, we'll move on to the next item. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Bunny. We appreciate your thank time. You, ladies and gentlemen.